All right, so today we are continuing our preparation for a Siberian uh, expedition. Well, before Siberian uh, expedition, we're trying to get ready for our Wyoming border-to-border uh, -border expedition. And what we have uh, noticed is after installing the rear bumper, that the rear suspension sagged about, do you remember, about an inch or close to an inch? Which has made it about level because before without a spare tire and uh, uh, with a factory bumper or half of it that was left there. So now it's kind of leveled, but with continuing, continuing adding things to it plus uh, once it's loaded for the for the expedition with all the tools with all the everything that we're going to take with us you it's probably likely will sag some more so what <coughs> we're going to try to do as a solution is install this uh, airlift uh, air springs uh, this is the longest one that they offer uh, the model number is 60755 um, I don't remember exactly what is recommended for the, for the stock Land Cruiser it's uh, a little bit shorter this one is the longest one that they offer uh, since the since uh, the the vehicle has a uh, about two and a half inch lift so that's what we're going to well we have to try to figure out is what um, there's extended bump stops on our suspension so we'll probably all have to cut those anyway as we go along we'll have to figure out how we exactly we, it will fit and uh, well, then we'll route all the plumbing for, for the air it's not going to be automatically level, leveling system it is basically you pump the air or the pressure up as needed and that's what Mitch is going to start uh, figuring out while I am Mitch let me have camera I am replacing my belts um, specifically my alternator belt because that annoying uh, whining noise that uh, can be heard in the videos is driving me nuts and I think I isolated um, the noise to those belts. Now those not a Toyota belts. I have uh, ripped the original ones that were on the truck and it did not make noise. I end up buying um, a set of belts from CarQuest and they at, at least visually I haven't actually measured but it, they seem to be well first of all for those who haven't looked under the hood uh, Toyota is running two belts for the alternator. Uh, they are supposed to be matched belts and I don't think CarQuest have matched them. So for that reason I'm, I have purchased, I could not, uh, I probably could have found the genuine Toyota belts but I ordered a set from Napa and they look different well once I remove the old ones I'll uh, compare them uh, and they seem to be like they are actually cut from the same um, uh, stocks so they, they probably will match uh, one another much better and I actually have a second set that I have got on Amazon so those are Napa brand whoever makes it for, for Napa um, but the second set is made by, I'll try to remember where I have put them, yeah, for, uh, by Gates. And I think hanging out on the forum, a, uh, IH8MUD forum, I think I've seen somewhere someone who mentioned putting those belts and uh, with, uh, with the success. But they look... Uh, fairly similar as far as um, it it almost looks like it made on the same factory just branded differently I probably will end up putting Napa just to see 
if the noise goes away and if it does I'll uh, leave them there if the noise persists I don't know if I'm going to try gate. now it, I'm definitely not an expert mechanic so I'm not going to um, go step step by step but just for those who have a land land cruiser but um, never really open up the hood and uh, haven't done much work for it and since the vehicle uh, at least this generation land cruisers are getting more and more popular for wheelers um, so basically it's fairly simple job well simple on one hand on the other one uh, since I'm running the supercharger I have the serpentine belt and uh, there is a tensioner um, here that it has to be the tension has to be released so th that can be removed and it actually routed where nothing else ha has to be removed in order to um, to slip it off now in front of the two two belts for for the alternator there is also air conditioning belt which runs the air conditioning compressors down there so that has to be removed in, uh, because it's it's uh, sitting ahead of it um, and it's fairly uh, straightforward job let me get under the truck okay so it's well, I can I can see my screen what am I filming okay so on the there's a this little tensioner pulley that tensions the um, AC compressor belt so once that's loosened there is a bolt in front here that it, it actually fixes it and this one will uh, will give it the tension so by um, or loosening this bolt in front of the pulley and then uh, loosening the, the bolt it will release the tension from from the belt and that can be removed now on the alternator side it's a this is a very very easy access but on the alternator uh, alternator side uh, let me grab something that I can point so there is two bolts up there this is the fixing bolt right here I uh, see if it's visible at all it's kind of hard to see let's see anyway that that bolt right where the end of the wrench is that would be I don't know I can't see if it's visible at all or not um, so that that bolt would be uh, uh, fixing it once the tension is done and that right there there is a bolt another bolt that one is actually the, the would uh, tension the the belt once they installed so they'll it will have to be unscrewed and on the top i don't know if i'm explaining it reasonable or if it's just but anyway may, maybe it will help somebody who is doing it first time and will be easier to trend than trying to figure it out so anyway on the top with the alternator is right under the um, this distributor there is another bolt that actually holds uh, alternator in, in place that will doesn't have all, all it has to be loosened so the alternator can pivot and once it goes down it pivots it loosens the belt and of course that that bolt uh, that uh, um, increases the tension of the, of the belt will be by screwing it in would actually pivot the alternator up and and uh, will tension the belts well hopefully this convoluted explanation is going to be helpful for somebody but that's what i'm working on and once i'm done i'm but half halfway done mitch has just showed up so he's going to start figuring out figuring out those air springs once i'm done here i'll Go over there and see what I can help him with. Do you need help? Nope. Oh, oh, he doesn't need daddy's help anymore. <laughs> we'll see. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's the cheap 
car quest belts and they are they don't look anything like what Napa calls for a land cruiser or Gates produces and that, those are actually look more like the original Toyota ones that I had then again I assume it was Toyota ones I'm not sure since I didn't own the vehicle for, um, since it was brand new I'm not sure but anyway that's the, the difference and car quest I don't know if it solves will solve my whining issue but it's definitely doesn't look like belt but, uh, oh, talking about probably not so much right now they, they uh, look more of the same size but when they were brand new there was it looked like they were mismatched but I installed it because at the time that's what I had and I ran, ran it for a while now and really got fed up with that noise so we'll see if it's gonna fix it all right so the belts are on and voila the stupid annoying whining noise is gone I should have done it a long time ago but just like anybody else sometimes I just procrastinate so now there's the only, the only thing that I'm not happy about is that exhaust leak and uh, the parts are not here yet so once I'll get the parts that will be taken care of but finally this annoying <coughs> uh, whining noise is gone we also replaced the supercharger belt and that had to be matched uh, Napa doesn't have the, uh, the part number since the supercharger was in the factory option they don't even list it so uh, I just took the old one on took, uh, off and took it to Napa and they matched it and this part is done now <clears throat> on the suspension side I kind of helped actually Mitch helped me with the belts because it was a good upper, uh, time for him to learn where all the pulley tensioners are and how to put it back together here it's not very complicated it's pretty obvious but he hasn't done it before so I let him do it this time around and installing it back on that way if something happen, happens on the field he'll be able to he'll be able to do it so now we're going to work on on those uh, air springs and uh, we'll bring you along all right so the plan is basically those uh, uh, air springs will go on the inside of the coil springs hopefully if we'll remove the bump stops that will be the right um, height which by looking at it I think just might be just fine and hopefully we wouldn't have to cut the bump stops and uh, uh, size them but it, by looking at it I think it will be just fine so at this point what, what we're gonna do is we're going to lift the, the frame <clears throat> take the tension off uh, leaf springs uh, in order the way it will go in it's actually uh, one would collapse it and once uh, uh, coil springs are stretched it will be wedged in between the the coils and then stand up uh, on the inside there but also we need to remove the, the bump stops so that's what we're going to do right now okay here we're where we are at Mitch had to go and get the high lift jack because we don't have any equipment designed to, love, to work with lifted vehicles so for that reason we cannot remove the springs and we need to remove the springs because the bump stops have to be removed so <clears throat> he's getting high lift jacked in the meantime by the way high lift jacked is actually supposed to be right here and I think I covered it in a bumper installation but the high lift jack that we have it has a wider um, 
uh, stance, platform, however one would describe it, so it wouldn't fit here. So we'll probably will ha we'll have to get a different uh, uh, the pl platform that it stands on. M uh, in the meantime, I am working on routing the, um, the hose that is going to go to the um, there is a T that will connect two airbags and then uh, it comes out here to the valve inflating valve and I've decided to put it uh, where my license plates holes are already um, in the on, on this rear oops what am I oh, I have pliers in there okay so anyway what I was saying is I'm routing it through where the license plate light was coming in into the uh, lift gate and on the outside here the holes that were for license plate I basically drilled it out and that's where the valve is going to be uh, to inflate the airbags or release the pressure and that's what I've been working on which I think will work out will work very well because uh, um, this little rubber booth will um, keep the line it's gonna go in that hole right there to, on, to the inside and uh, this grommet will go in the hole here so it will prevent it from kinking or getting cut, worn out and that's what I've been doing while Mitch is away Alright, so the springs are out while well, Mitch is back he brought the high lift jack, we are able to lift it and uh, I was concerned that we might have to unbolt the shocks in order to move the springs but they extend just far enough where with a little bit compressing the, sp the uh, coil springs just a little bit they no, popped out didn't even need to, didn't even need to uh -huh. um, so right now we're just going to remove those bump stops and see how um, the air springs will fi fit in all right It's dry fitting it. Of course, I put it in the wrong way, but. Right, it will have to be reversed. Are you not going to be able to get it out of there? You know, on, in the instructions, they. It would have been a pain trying to um, squeeze it between. Yeah, you can release the air out, but look at the top. It, will, uh, it would have required some persuasion. With some kind of blunt object because uh, you know using pry bar it's pretty easy probably to damage that that spring well you can you can f yeah fit them in right now so we can uh, we wouldn't have to worry about it and then of course that plate by the way you can remove this we don't need it anymore that was what what did this do you know what that, why this you know that stuff in there? Huh? No. When you uh, compress it and release all the air, you put this one in uh, so it doesn't, it keeps, keeps it uh, deflated. So the bump stops are basically have a bolt holding it up to the perch up there. It's half an inch and it requires a long an extension to get to it but it's pretty straightforward so once we're done fitting the springs seeing if we have enough um, if uh, the air springs are going to be tall enough at that point we'll have to just uh, run the line get all the fittings, air it up, 
and then we'll see the results. Alrighty, so everything is routed, everything is installed. Uh, we have a T right by the pumpkin, uh, enough slack for the hose uh, when the axle drops. So go ahead and mention, fill it up. The working pressure, according to manual, the instruction manual, the minimum, uh, the airbags need to be at the minimum inflated at uh, 5 psi, maximum is 35. So we're going to air it, air it to, what do you, what do you say Mitch, 25? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll air it to 35. 25. 25. And I am going to, good? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to measure if we gained any height. Well, it, it did look like it moved up a little bit when you were airing it up. Uh, hold the camera image. Let me measure it. And the measuring tape is right here. I mean, it's pretty much, it was leveled. The concern was loading it up and it would squat even more. So it was at 39 and we are at 39 and 3 quarters. So we gained about 3, quarter, three quarters of an inch at 25 psi. And maximum is at 35 so we can load it and air it up farther to 35 if, if we need to. But it's pretty much accomplished what we are set out to do. Um, another option was <clears throat> to actually fit uh, stiffer springs and that would have probably lifted it back to where it was a little bit nose heavy. I think we are just perfectly fine where we are and it gives, a, gives us an option to load it and uh, the air springs will hold up the weight. So Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next installment. I guess next one before we actually set out to um, to our border, uh, Wyoming border to border trip, we have to fix the exhaust and uh, that uh, once the parts come in, that's where will be the, the next project. Well, before we say goodbye, one more experiment that we wanted to experiment, we wanted to run is to lift one side up and see how well those bags will serve as a bump stop. I'm not sure if this pneumatic uh, lift will uh, compress the, the, the spring and stuff the tire into wheel well, how far at least. But it might give us a little bit of an idea. All right, a test to see how much tire we can stuff into the wheel well and how well those uh, airbags will work as bump stops at 25 psi. Watch that front uh, tire, once it starts lifting in the front, you can stop it. I think we can go more. We can probably go more, but that, that gives us a good idea. There is all this drop here. And here is the, it's off, created a gap. And I'm pretty sure, Mitch, if we lower it, actually. I think I like the way it's. 
It won't rub this way. No, it's still quite a bit of travel. Well, why don't you lower uh, lower the the pressure in the airbags to say 20 psi, and we'll see if it's gonna stuff it anymore. I think I see some movement, so it's stuffing it farther. I guess it's... <laughs> if it's moving farther up, it's so slow that I can't even decipher anything. Yeah, I, th I think it, it got closer to the bumper. It's 19.8 right now. Well, you know what? Even for rock crawling, this is plenty of, of flex, I would say. <clears throat> and those... Okay, so it compressed it, but it does work like a bump stop. So it's not bad. Of course, the best thing would be uh, to test it in real life. All right. Well, that's it for today, and we'll see you next time. I think we are done for tonight and uh, ready to go home, get some supper. And, uh, well, we'll see you next time.